This is a quick update about my custom 3D printer. If you watched one of my previous videos, you may notice that there's actually quite a lot of new updates to this printer. So today I decided to talk about them in more detail. And we'll go from the bottom towards the top. Here at the bottom first you can see the housing for PTT's TFT 3.5 inch touchscreen which is already covered in a video and you can go check that out so I won't go to much details but here the orange thing that you see is actually a stop that comes from the linear rails and here on the housing uh, it actually covers uh, the reset button and then next to it there's a knob that you can also use of course beside the touch screen itself the touch screen is actually really practical because on the side you have also two slots one for the SD card and one for the USB. And you can basically control the printer through this touchscreen. So it's really practical. Um, now the housing is 3D printed. Uh, actually all of the parts that are black on this printer are 3D printed on my X1 Carbon except for the aluminum extrusions here at the side that you can see which are 20 by 40 and they are actually stacked one on top of each other. So yeah, all other parts are 3D printed. Uh, that's why you can see also this uh, texture uh, that comes from the PII texture plate, uh, which is pretty standard in nowadays 3D printers. Then at the front here, at the bottom, you have also the 3D printed cover for the aluminum extrusion and also here in the middle and for the uh, Y axis. Now, the middle part also has holes on top uh, and that's to prevent the overheating of the electronics. Inside, I don't have the footage right now, but maybe I'll pull some old footage over it, uh, is actually a 12 volt power supply and uh, it supplies on one end the step-down converter that powers the LEDs uh, which are below the x-axis and I'll talk about them in a bit and the other uh, output actually supplies the SKR Mini E3 version 3.0 uh, which is the motherboard that drives this 3D printer or at least the three stepper motors uh, for the Y X and also the Z axis and of course the extruder and so far the motherboard I have to say it's been great it's really robust and also the TMC drivers that it has uh, are amazing because these motors uh, which are actually NEMA 17 are really really silent um, so that's really great now we can check out the print bed the dimensions of the print bed are 220 millimeters by 220 and along the Z axis 280. So the build volume is actually quite large. And then there are these special features um, on the bed. So for example, as you can see, there are lifted edges that help to guide the PII texture plate, which is currently missing uh, and will be added later. And then there's also this uh, really nice cover for the cable, which of course uh, provides the current to heat the bed. I wanted for the printer to have the smallest uh, footprint uh, as possible. And as you can see from the top, uh, it's pretty small, it's pretty compact. So I really like that. Also, if you take a closer look to the print bed uh, and the Z-axis, so the distance between is really minimal. So now we can jump straight to the print head. As you can see the print head can move along the linear rail pretty smoothly uh, and it's 3D printed like every other part but what's really great about it is that it's actually magnetic. So it has magnets and that's really practical because it can detach and reattach anytime needed. Under the print head there's also BTT's microprobe which helps with auto-leveling the system. The print head is connected to a silicon tube that goes to the extruder on the x-axis. And this is actually a peristaltic pump driven by a stepper motor. 
So here on the x-axis you have the peristaltic pump and there's also the separate stepper motor that drives the print head left and right. The other end of the peristaltic pump is actually connected through this ABS belt on the back of the 3D printer to a 50 milliliter centrifuge. So from this you may actually guess what the application of the 3D printer might be, but today I won't talk about it. Of course you have also the covers for the electronics here, uh, and what's also special maybe about it is there are some clips that uh, hold everything together uh, so that the silicon tubing doesn't fall off. So now I think it's time to take a look at the printer from the side. As you can see everything is bolted down and it's like really sturdy even if I shake it everything stays where it should be. Of course this silicon tubing should be cut short and will be eventually and here is actually the z-axis as I said before 280 millimeters of travel and it's actually fastened through a connector that's partially 3D printed but partially from steel. This is actually my first custom 3D printer build and I'm super happy about it because I didn't really plan everything ahead, I just went with it and I knew what I wanted and now I achieved it I think. Of course if you guys have any suggestions please leave them in the comments. But now I think it's time to turn on the printer and do some calibrations. So to turn on the printer we have to go here to the back of the 3D printer and there's this of course switch to turn it on and underneath there's a fuse so if anything goes wrong the fuse is activated. And this is how the printer looks from the back, I think it's amazing. The printer has 96 LED per meter strip but it's only 35 centimeters long so there's around 30 LEDs altogether. So the auto bed leveling has actually 25 calibration points which means it takes 25 points from the print bed and then calibrates and interpolates between the points to set the Z height while printing. Now if we take a look at the mesh that it created, so from that 25 points, we can see that the precision is around 1 millimeter between the points. It could probably be better, but I guess the print bed is bent a bit, so we can nothing do about it. So I think that I'll end here today. If you're interested in the journey of this 3D printer and its final application, I would like to invite you to follow me here and on other social media to keep you updated. Of course this could be done to any other printer, you would just switch the print head and implement the peristaltic pump, but that was not the point. I wanted to have something unique, something unbranded and it was actually a great learning curve. Uh, and I can't wait to show you guys what this printer can do, so please follow and I'll see you in the next video.